in as we go. So today's talk is going to be A, hypothesis free, B, data free, and pretty much for the most part picture free because I'm being recorded so I had to take out the unicorn and my little pony pictures. So you don't even get those. So I want to start by thanking my co-authors, most especially Brent Faircloth, who's at UCLA and will be moving to LSU very shortly. So today what I'm going to do is sort of give you an overview for a series of methods that we're, we've been working on for a couple of years and we'll have rolling out here over the next couple of months. I'm going to try not to give you too many details because it takes at least an hour to go through all of the details. So what I'm going to do is give you an overview. We'll talk about a couple of examples and then I'll wrap up by where the details will be posted so that you can keep track of these things. All right, so in general, if you think about the problem that we work on, right? When we're trying to collect data, we have, generally we can split it into two axes, right? The number of loci, which can be one, a single locus, up to a whole genome. And we can try and assess that for a single individual or up to thousands of individuals, right? In general, that covers all of us and what we do. So again, whole genome sequencing is sort of down here. You get lots and lots of data, but not for very many individuals. On the other hand, if you have PCR, you can scale that from a very small number of individuals to up to huge numbers of individuals. Alternatively, if you want to scale up the number of loci and get a reasonable number of indi individuals, you can do sequence capture of UCEs or exons or whatever you like. And then we have RADSeq, which is sort of higher numbers of individuals and usually higher numbers of loci. So Adapterama has the very modest sort of goal of covering that entire landscape. Okay, That's what we're going to try and do. And so this picks up on the theme that Lacey was talking about last night, is that we want to have methods that look to the future and allow us to collaborate and test all kinds of hypotheses. Right? So I'm going to try and stay away from any individual one in this talk, but the idea is that this should generate ideas in your mind about how you can use these techniques and how you might work together. And so I'm going to talk about this in four specific ways with four different manuscripts that we're working on to be submitted very soon. The first one is Adapteroma number one, where we'll be talking about iTrue and iNext which is our version of making TrueSeq and Nextera libraries for Illumina. Number two is Tega Matrix, and this is the idea of being able to build Amplicon libraries that again you can run on Illumina, on any of the Illumina platform instruments. Number three is our versions of RadSeq. We have three different versions of RadSeq that we're working on, and I'll talk mostly about 3RAD, which is our way of making dual digest RAD seq libraries. And then finally, what I'm not going to cover today is a program that Grant Faircloth is working on called Splitaki. And so this is a way of demultiplexing samples when you have up to four different indices per sample. Okay? And so this is something that would go on the front end of Bailuchi, for example, if you did UC captures. Okay, so what's this whole adapter thing all about? So when you get down to the nugget, what we're doing is that we're taking DNA molecules and we're simply adding double-stranded pieces of DNA where we know the sequence onto each end of each piece of DNA that we're gonna sequence, right? So Adapterama is simply dealing with that red and blue chunk of DNA, okay? So what we're gonna do is play with that system. How is it? that we can break this down into Tinker Toys or into Legos if you're younger, right? So that we can make this system into pieces that we can handle. All right, so what would we like to be able to do? We'd like to be able to handle intact DNA, shredded DNA, small amounts of DNA, Amplicon, sequence capture, RADSeq, GPS, full genome sequencing. That's all we want, right? <laughs> If we could do that, that'd be great, okay? So how are we going to achieve this? Okay, again, we're going to make Illumina TrueSeq is what I'm going to talk about today. It also, we have Nextera, which I'm going to park. Basically, I'm not going to talk about that, but we have all the same things set up for Nextera. We're always going to be doing
doing two stage library preps. Okay? In the second stage, we will always use the same set of primers for all the different methods that I'm going to talk about. These are dual indexed primers that will lead to dual indexed Illumina libraries, which is sort of the industry standard <coughs> at this point in time. They all have eight nucleotide indices. They have an edit distance of three apart. We have over 384 of them designed. So it's a large universe. Yeah, it's a relatively large sandbox that we're playing. Okay. All of our protocols are freely available. All the tools, spreadsheets that I'm talking about are freely available. If they're not on the web yet, you can email me and I will send them to you. I've been sharing some of these things for up to the past two years. You know, we're ready to release them into the wild, okay? We are also making aliquots of our oligos, which we'll provide to people at our cost if you would like those aliquots. And we're also making services available, again, at our cost if it's not economical for you to try and do these things in your lab. So choose what you want, be happy. Okay, so the overall picture again, what's the summary? We're gonna take a variety of DNA inputs and then we're going to add adapters to them depending on what our application is, right? So it's an application, this is the application specific point. After that, it's always the same. We have this universal set of primers, which we've got the I5 side, the I7 side, each one of those is indexed, okay? And that's gonna help us to produce Illumina TrueC compatible libraries, okay? The only difference between this and what Illumina set out as their original or their second protocol about five or six years ago is that we're doing dual indexing with eight nucleotide indexing instead of single indexes on the I7 side, okay? So we're going back to the future, basically, okay? All of these tag approaches will use combinatorics, okay? Which means that if on one side I have the one and two primers and on the other side I have the AB primers, we're gonna do every single combination of those, okay? And you might say, well, for four samples, I haven't gained anything. It takes four tags to label four tubes. That's crazy. Why are you doing this? Okay. If you scale it up, the economy of scale gets to become more obvious. And so let me illustrate it this way. If you had a large project where you had 9,200 samples that you wanted to individually tag, okay, if you did a single index, and you simply paid IDT to synthesize those primers for you, it would cost you about a quarter of a million dollars. I don't have a quarter of a million dollars, okay? But if I break that into two tags that I can do combinatorially, that can get me down to about $5,000, okay? That's a cost that's more reasonable for evolutionary biologists, okay? Again, we have 384, so you could go, 384 times 384, that's the possible design space that we have. We literally in hand have 48 plus 154. We have, the last time I had these synthesized, I had IBT go ahead and make aliquots and dry them down in 96 well plates, so they're in 48 for 96 well plate. If you want some of those aliquots, all you have to do is let me know. Okay, and so, why would you want to do that? Again, you could pay IDT $5,000, or if you paid us $600, you'd get enough to make 4,800 libraries, okay? So economically, if you're gonna make more than 40,000 libraries, pay IDT, okay? If you're not gonna make more than 40,000 libraries, you simply don't have to make, you don't have to do that, okay? So what are our examples, super fast, okay? So the first is making genomic libraries. There's really nothing unique about that. It's the normal library prep process. Share your DNA, add an A, put in adapters that have T, do the PCRs, okay? There's nothing funky about that. You can use Kappa kits, life is good, okay? What's maybe a little more interesting is how do I make these amplicon libraries, okay? Because I'd like to be able to sequence my amplicon. Really cheap on the MICE. Okay, and the answer for 
that is relatively straightforward. You make fusion primers, where on the read one, so you have read one fusions, okay, for the alumina read one, next to, or alumina or next terra or true seek on the forward primer, and then you have read two fusion on the reverse primer. And that makes it possible to go into this exact same design. Now, if you had a bunch of samples, right? I don't want to do PCRs because I'd have to do a two-stage PCR. If I have 500 samples or 1,000 samples, I don't want to do PCRs twice. That's not good. What I can do there is insert tags. So in between the read one part, the Illumina specific part, and the locus specific part, I can put one of these indexes. And it's that same kind of an index that I would use in other places. So I can make different versions of my forward primer, different versions of my reverse primer. I can type it across this way, type it across that way, and get unique combinations of the primers. And then I can pool whole plates of 96 before I do the outer tag. Okay. So the inner tags mark the well, the outer tag marks the plate. Okay. And so what we end up with are amplicons with libraries that have four indexes, okay? So this gives you a lot of power. Again, let me illustrate that. If you had a 96 well plate, you'd have eight versions of your forward, 12 versions of your reverse. You could take those, purify them, normalize them, in a SQL prep plate, make a single pool, do a single secondary amplification to add the I5 and I7 index, that becomes your plate, and now I can pool that with anybody else's stuff, okay? And so what I wanna illustrate to you the power of that is that let's suppose you wanna sequence 384 mammal samples for cytochrome B. You should pay less than a dollar to do that, okay? We can combine that with your RADSeq project that you want, maybe wanna pay $100 for, but you wanna do a whole genome, you, so you need more sequence. We want to be able to combine all of those together on a mice Okay, and so as long as we're using these consistent techniques, we can do that. Okay, so basically what we've done is to turn sort of an economic problem into a social problem, because your dollar's worth of sequence is less than it costs for a beer. Okay, I don't need your dollar. Buy me a beer, right? And then you can spike in your samples on mine. The three reds work pretty much the same way, so I'm gonna skip over that. But it's the same idea. We have dual digest um, linkers that are ready to go. All of this is gonna be available on baddna.org. Okay, very simple to remember, baddna.org. They'll be available soon. If you wanna to write to me, it's travisg at UGA.